Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I cry to you all the day long. O Lord, you are good and forgiving, full of mercy to all who call to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. This Mass is being offered for the intentions of Roshin, Mark, and Sean. We heard um, in our entrance antiphon of the, the mercy of God. But today we hear of three women who experienced no mercy at the end of, at the end of their lives on earth. Saints Margaret Clitheroe and Lyne and St. Margaret Mary Ward, all martyrs during the Reformation, who were Catholics, recusants as they would have been known uh, at the time, um, but were persecuted and eventually killed for their faith. More about those after our gospel. And so, my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to the Father and to one another. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You heal the wounds of our sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ. You intercede for us with the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, to us who honour the fidelity in life and constancy in death of your holy martyrs, saints Margaret Clitheroe, Anne Lyne, and Margaret Wood, that they who drew from you the strength to triumph may likewise always obtain from you the grace of victory for us. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We want you to be quite certain, brothers, about those who have died, to make sure that you do not grieve about them like the other people who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again and that it will be the same for those who have died in Jesus. God will bring them with him. We can tell you this from the Lord's own teaching, that any of us who are left alive until the Lord's coming will not have any advantage over those who have died. At the trumpet of God, the voice of the archangel will call out the command, and the Lord himself will come down from heaven. Those who have died in Christ will be the first to rise, and then those of us who are still alive will be taken up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. So we shall stay with the Lord forever. With such thoughts as these, you should comfort one another. The word of the Lord. The Lord comes to rule the earth. O oh, sing a new song to the Lord. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell among the nations his glory and his wonders among all the peoples. The Lord comes to rule the earth. The Lord is great and worthy of praise, to be feared above all gods. The gods of the heathens are naught. It was the Lord who made the heavens. The Lord comes to rule the earth. Let the heavens rejoice and earth be glad. Let the sea and all within it thunder praise. Let the land and all it bears rejoice. All the trees of the wood shout for joy at the presence of the Lord, for he comes. He comes to rule the earth. The Lord comes to rule the earth. With justice he will rule the world. He will judge the peoples with his truth. The Lord comes to rule the earth. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. 
Anyone who follows me will have the light of life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath as he usually did. He stood up to read and they handed him the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Unrolling the scroll, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for he has anointed me. He has sent me to bring the good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives and to the blind new sight, to set the downtrodden free, to proclaim the Lord's year of favour. He then rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the assistant and sat down, and all eyes on the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to speak to them. This text is being fulfilled today even as you listen. And he won the approval of all, and they were astonished by the gracious words that came from his lips. They said, this is Joseph's son, surely. But he replied, no doubt, you will quote me saying, physician, heal yourself, and tell me, we have heard all that happened in Capernaum, do the same here in your own countryside. And he went on, I tell you solemnly, no prophet is ever accepted in his own country. There were many widows in Israel, I can assure you, in Elijah's day, when heaven remained shut for three years and six months, and a great famine raged throughout the land. But Elijah was not sent to any one of these. He was sent to a widow at Zarephath, a Sidonian town. And in the prophet Elisha's time, there were many lepers in Israel, but none of these were cured except the Syrian, Naaman. When they heard this, Everyone in the synagogue was enraged. They sprang to their feet and hustled him out the town, and they took him up to the brow of the hill their own town was built on, intending to throw him down the cliff. But he slipped through the crowd and walked away. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of the Gospel blot out all my sins. So today we hear of three great, brave, and heroic women. St. Margaret Clitheroe first. So St. Margaret was born in York and lived there all her life. And at the age of 15, she married a butcher, John Clitheroe. And three years later, she became a Catholic. Now she was imprisoned for her non-attendance at the Protestant church because at that time that if you refused to go to a Protestant church, uh, you could indeed be fined and imprisoned. This must have happened several times to her for her to be imprisoned. But she taught herself to read and on her release ran a small school for her own and her neighbor's children. Now her husband, although he remained a Protestant himself, allowed her to hide priests in the house. And in 1586, the secret hiding place was discovered and Margaret was put on trial. And as the law stood then, to be found guilty would have meant destitution for her children, she, so she refused to plead. Thus, she could not be tried and instead was crushed to death with a heavy stone. So what they would do is they would place a board on top of her and then place a stone upon her until uh, she was crushed to death. An awful way to go. Second, St. Anne Lyne, and Anne Lyne uh, belongs to our diocese. And you can see an image of her in our uh, altar to the beatified martyrs there. So she was born in Dunmo in Essex. In her teens, she became a Catholic and was completely disinherited by her family. And then she married another disinherited convert, Roger Lyon. Her husband was imprisoned for his faith and then sent into exile, leaving her completely destitute. She taught and embroidered and also kept house for priests. And one day, a large number of people were seen congregating at her house for mass. She was arrested, tried, condemned to death, and hung at Tyburn. And lastly, we have St. Margaret Wood, a very similar story, born in Cheshire. She became a servant in a house in London, and she was arrested after helping a priest to escape from prison. 
But even under severe torture, she refused to tell her torturers where the priest had gone. And she was tried at the Old Bailey and executed on the 30th of August, 1588. So all of these women believed in the true religion and was prepared to die for it. It's an extraordinary witness. We hear, of course, very much about uh, St. Thomas More and John Fisher, rightly so, in our uh, beatified altar. Um, but also, there are many brave women. These are three of many who were prepared to hide priests so that they could say mass for the persecuted Catholic community after uh, King Henry VIII uh, divorced uh, his first wife, St. Catherine of Aragon, and married Anne Boleyn, and then went on, and so of course, uh, the real separation from Rome started, and he turned against the Catholic Church, as later did uh, Elizabeth too. But there was always this, this brave, recusant Catholics who kept the faith. It's what uh, St. John Henry Newman called the census fidelium. Sometimes when there is no hierarchy, there's no uh, uh, leadership, sometimes because of persecution, the faithful carry the true faith, even if it is underground. So once again, in, whenever I speak about the martyrs, let's pray for those who are still being persecuted. People who are carrying the faith in extraordinary circumstances. And I, although I've mentioned countries before where I'm sure the Catholic Church is operating underground, it feels to me almost uh, dangerous to maybe mention where they might be. But they are there, still carrying the faith. Let's pray for them. But let's also pray that we may be brave in our witness in our time too. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> Receive, Holy Father, the offerings we bring in, commemor in commemoration of the holy martyrs, and grant that we, your servants, may be found steadfast in confessing your name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For the blood of your blessed martyrs, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which, in our weakness, you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept 
and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis our Pope and Alan our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, Roshim, Mark, and Sean, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogenus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God, I offer you this body of life. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. 
Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Greater love has no one than to lay down his life for his friends, says the Lord.
Let us pray. O God, who in your holy martyrs have wonderfully made known the mystery of the cross, graciously grant that drawing strength from this sacrifice, we may cling faithfully to Christ and labor in the church for the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May mighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Therefore, the Mass is ended. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the death of our Be our safe, God, and may God have